Hey guys, Panzer King back here in July of 1940 for episode 9.1, Germany's turn of the fabulous Operation Winter Solace. Um, yeah, so this is Germany's turn here, but I'm probably going to break this up to a few segment of videos just to make it easy. Um, two things we're going to do in this first segment is we're going to review what Germany wants to develop for technology. And second, we're going to roll for these submarines that did get a hit um, the following or the uh, the recent turn and the turn before that. So we'll probably roll those and do our technology rolls, see what happens, um, and we'll just get everything out of the way um, right away. So yeah. So probably order of operation. Let's do these rolls here. So I, I've placed everything where I believe there was a submarine. The red, the black, and the gray all will be for the last turn, which was January 1940. And the white dice will represent U-47, which was, I believe, in July of 1939. So we'll just see if we have any hits on those guys. And we'll see. We're looking for threes or less, but I doubt we're going to get that much luck. Look at that. We got two hits. Well, that's pretty awesome. It's better than what I expected. I expected maybe one hit. So we have the white and the black um, made a hit. So I'll pass this on to Jinx. So whatever uh, was in C-Zone 32 last turn, there was a hit. And I believe I had said um, whatever was in the C-Zone when U-47 was there, which was, I believe, July 1939, that also was a hit. So those two... Uh, I'll leave that up to you, James. Take whatever you, you feel is appropriate, a destroyer, a plane, whatever, um, and then we'll go from there. But uh, moreover than that, we're going to roll our technology rolls. So this is what we need here across the spectrum. So we'll see, uh, we'll see if we get that. What we'll do is we'll just grab the dice on this side and uh, see, just randomly pick which ones uh might give us sorry the uh the best options there so we are missing oops, sorry about that we got uh we're just missing a white okay so let's see what german technology is for 9.1 okay it doesn't look very favorable i think we probably just got two out of the six there so we got the gray and we got the black so that will be um strategic rockets well it's not too bad and we also got the black which is uh improved construction so that's also not too bad still still missed wartime economy just by one there um but yeah it is what it is so two out of the six not the greatest odds, but you know what we'll take it so 13 will move into the final phase so that will be good for uh good for germany and uh strategic rockets will move over into this phase here so that is what germany had got for their role so um what i'll probably do now is i'll just pause and go over um, some of the combat phases in this sequence okay guys and we're back so I originally had planned to spend $14 had we got advanced submarines on two advanced submarines, kind of like last turn, but we didn't get that. We weren't that successful. So I'm actually going to uh, probably pause the video again here and go over what I can probably spend with this $14. Like I say, I can't lend lease to Italy as much as I would love to, so I can't do that. So no big deal there. Um, but this is what Germany's buy is going to be. Germany is going to start a new fortification line in Warsaw. We're going to buy an extra militia. We're going to buy two advanced artillery. We're going to com complete the fortification line in Paris. Germany is going to lend lease a fighter to uh, southern France, to the Vichy French. Um, we're going to buy our own fighter and buy another medium bomber. And on top of that, we have two U-boats that we can sortie uh, with the remaining fleet. 
with a, these are the last two U-boats for the Canada expansion. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause now and ponder this, and, and then I'll bring the video back and say, hmm, what are we going to do with the extra $14? Um, and I'll see what uh, maybe Germany's best option will be. But before we do that, I'm just going to go over the battle sequences. So Germany is, has decided to attack um, the Dutch, try to dispatch the Dutch this turn. Um, they're going to be coming from Belgium. So they are, I believe, going to be crossing a river. I think a river is there. So any troops on this side has been calculated for a river penalty. Um, and then, of course, we also have troops coming in from Western Germany. And that's the orange battle. We'll just color code it for now. We are also going to be doing a Yugoslavian campaign. We're going to send troops from Romania um, and other Air Force um, assets down to Yugoslavia. Hopefully that we're successful there. We're also going to spread our forces and use our airborne and air transport and a fighter to attack Lithuania. Um, and see if we can steal that uh, $1, one dollar, one point, um, get in there underneath the radar. And we're also going to do this battle, which is the red battle here. So that'll be the green, this will be the red, um, in attacking um, Poland. Now the reason why we're attacking is because I got the okay from Jinx, or sorry, not Jinx, uh, Hilltop, saying, yes, you know what, I have no need to go into that area. I'd much rather have you go in that area uh, use your own forces and kill them rather than waste forces on mine, which is, you know, a valuable strategy or, or viable strategy, I should say. Um, so I took him up on his offer and I'm going to uh, see what I can annex to the Reich in those areas. He's already wartime income right now, but as I've said before, um, right now the Axis powers and the communist powers have a common enemy. Right now, the only way we're ever going to expand um, is invading allied territory, for the most part. We can also invade common territory right now, but we have a mutual enemy because that mutual enemy wants to keep us from that expansion. So right now, that's kind of what we're doing. We're staying out of each other's way because we're not allies, the communists and uh, the fascists. By any means, we are not allies. But right now, we have our own objectives throughout the world, and unfortunately, Germany has the burden to attack and uh, go after the Allied powers, whereas the Comintern can be as belligerent as they want and attack wherever they want. So we'll see what, uh, what Hilltop does in his next turn, but right now, that's what Germany is going to do for its battles. It's doing four major campaigns, plus uh, a non-combat movement for the Vichy French is they are gonna send their fighter from southern France down to western Algeria as well to hopefully stop advancement um, with the allies there in that area. So we'll see what happens. We don't know what exactly is going on, but, uh, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, you know what, I might even change that objective and I might even bring that uh, fighter to Algiers or Tunisia. I'm not quite sure, but I'll let you know that that's probably a non-combat movement that we're gonna make. Um, here in the future. So I'll pause the video now and I'll decide what I want to do with these 14 Reichsmarks and I'll get back to you in a bit. Okay guys, we're back. Simple buy here. We're not going to build anything with the Kriegsmarine. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put it into land forces. So we're going to buy two more infantry and then we're going to buy two more um, self-propelled artillery, which is probably an interesting buy, but we'll see how... Uh, See how that goes. But anyways, let's start off with the big attack in the Dutch. I wanna see how that goes. And I have everything set up here. So we're just focusing on the orange here, and then of course the orange on the other side. We've counted into the river penalty, anybody coming from that side, which, you know, had I thought about this, but then I started looking at the map, and you, you gotta look at the map, because obviously I would never have had them there, I would have taken them somewhere else, but obviously, I don't really have that option at the current moment, so no big deal, right? Anyways, long story short, that's what uh, that's currently what we're doing here. The infantry also, also suffers a river penalty, so they're there separately, and then they'll all be moved up once, uh, once we've done our combat. So, right now though, we have our carpet bombing, which we should probably do first, and we'll have three dice, 
and we're looking for three or less to see if we can take any off the Dutch. Well, look at that. We actually got two hits. So that's actually really impressive. Um, now, usually they're going to have the option, so they're probably going to take it off Militia. And we have Militia set up here for the orange, so we'll just take two, uh, two orange dice off that. So that does help, you know, hopefully with a bit of the cannon fodder. Uh, but of course, we can't use that now again. So those red dice are null and void, and we'll take that over here. And uh, now we'll roll the main, uh, the main sequence. And we should probably just try to do this while I have all my hands available, since there is quite a few dice in the sequence. And hopefully I haven't made too many mistakes, because there's a lot going on in this game. And oh, that's, uh, I believe, a yellow. That is true, that's a yellow. There we go. Okay, so now let's roll. Okay, so what do we have here? Look at those dreaded white dice that could have been hits, but they're not. Um, so anyways, let's look at this here. We have two fighter hits, so that's good. Um, we'll take those off. We have, oh, sorry, we're looking at the orange here. Sorry, down here. So we have two fighter hits. We have a hit with our tactical bomber. So that's another, another hit, so that's good. Um, I'm just trying to think what we have here for the gray dice. Um, bear with me here. We had two, oh, medium bomber. That's probably what, sorry, the medium bomber was, uh, orange. And then we got, so the two gray. So what was, oh, the medium armor. That's what it was. So yeah, so the medium armor. So we have a hit with a medium armor here, one here, but that's nothing there. So that's good. Um, we don't have any cavalry. And anything yellow, we need two or less, which we didn't. And anything white or blue, we would need one or two. Um, which I don't see anything there. So, all good, no worries. So, so we have a, a total of five hits on, on the Dutch. So let's roll the Dutch first now. And we'll take up all their lovely dice. And we'll set this up here and see the biggest Dutch army I've ever seen. See their counter roll. So we had five hits. So what did they take off of us? So just orange here. So nothing on the militia. But I know we're going to take off two of those dice. So we'll just get rid of the militia. And uh, so once again, we're defending at four or less. And we looks like they have... Um, we need to take off five hits, so let's just one, two, three, four. So they got a total of four hits on us. I'll return one dice to take off what's left. So they have four hits on us. So that's not too, too bad for the Dutch. I've removed their casualties. Um, and let's just um, move this up now. As all the Marines, because they're past the river penalty, as well as the infantry. Um, and that's that's them there. So uh, it doesn't really matter who we who we take off. Actually, we should probably move them here. Um, we'll probably we'll probably take the basic infantry off. That's probably what's what makes the most sense. So that'll be four blue dice. So that's that's them right there. So now we'll roll again. And I'll just, sorry, set this down here. And just keep it in your field of view. And we'll go again. Okay, so once again, fighters. Got nothing on the fighters. Um, got one hit on the medium bomber which is nice. Tanks, we have ooh, three hits, which is nice. Um, this is a really cocked dice. Doesn't really matter. It, it is what it is. I think this moved by accident. I don't think it was there, so we're not going to count that. Um, and I don't think any of these moved. So I think we got a, another hit here. This blue dice is really cocked, but we'll just we'll leave it at that. So I think a total of five hits would be fair. 
So five hits on the Dutch, and then we'll go over here and roll their retaliatory strike. And the Dutch only got one hit, so that's, that's pretty good for us. So we're gonna take off five dice, remove them, and we're gonna take, uh, I guess, probably that last blue dice off. And uh, now all we need is one more hit, and we can claim victory. We'll just do this officially here. Okay. And we got a hit on our fighter. That's all we really need to see. And we'll see if the Dutch get a, get a hit on their final strike. And they got a five, and that is a no-go. So... That is not too bad for what we got. Um, I'll leave this as is and I'll, I'll set it up once it's done. But let's move on to the next battle here, which is the blue battle, which is the Yugoslavians. So here we have our, uh, uh, we're going into mountains, so they're all down one as well. Um, we also have, uh, we have a cavalry coming in, but I believe actually they should be down one, two. It's a good eye, hopefully. I got that right. And then we have everything else. So that should be everything. We're suffering the penalty this turn. They're going to roll. <laughs> Look at all those 11s. Lovely. Just the wrong 11s. And of course the cavalry got a hit. Oh, you know what, guys? That is actually a 16-sided dice. I do apologize. If that's okay, I'll roll another 12-sided dice. And it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, so that's fine. But I don't think we got a single hit. Not a single hit anywhere. Not in the fighter, not in the bomber. Oof, that's not good. So we'll see what the Yugoslavians have in retali retaliatory strike for us. And they got two hits. One in their cavalry, one in their infantry. So we're going to take two of our useless infantry off. And we're going to roll again. It's a shame about air power, but air power is no guarantee sometimes. Um, so, we got a hit on our fighter, our tactical, and I don't see anything else. So that's two off of them. So they get to roll again, and we'll see what we, we have to defend with. They have, it looks like one hit in total. So we'll take two gray dice off. Well, actually no. That's not correct, because knowing Joey, he will, uh, or Jinx, he'll take off the black dice of cavalry and keep the high hitters. So, then he got one hit off of us, so we'll take another infantry off. And uh, we'll roll, um, sorry, we roll that, we gotta roll the, roll the attack again. And see what, uh, see what happens. So, we have a hit with our fighter. I'll call that probably a hit with our infantry, and that's it. So two more hits again, um, and then they're going to roll back here, and look at that, misses all around. Good news for the Germans, good news. So, no casualties there, we'll roll again, maybe we can bring a conclusion to this battle. Uh, we got a hit. On our fighter, once again, the tactical miss. No, just only one hit out of all that. And they will retaliate. So we got one, so one for one. So one gray off and another white off. Let's do that. And go once more. And we do have a hit with our tactical. And they're gonna roll. And they got a hit once more. So I guess, uh, I probably should take my cavalry off. Maybe at that point there too. So it is a victory in Yugoslavia, but a costly one. We lost a lot of units going after it. So that is, uh, that's what we have left, which is probably our motorized and, uh, and a regular infantry plus our air power. So it is what it is. But nonetheless, uh, victory for the Dutch, victory for the Yugoslavians. Now, let's just go over here. Hopefully this will be a quicker combat good or, or not, and we'll play the, the, uh, the green battle, which will be the battle for Lithuania. And here we have, we're attacking with these two units in the green zone here, and we're hoping for a hit, and look at that, 
the Airborne actually got a hit. Now we're hoping for a miss, which is an infantry, so four or less. Look at that, they got a hit. So we don't get to take Lithuania this round. We'll obviously take the Airborne off, no problems there, but you know, it is unfortunate, that's for sure. Totally unfortunate. Um, and then we'll go on to the red battle, which is uh, right here, which is where northeastern Poland, I believe. And we're looking for a hit. We do have one hit. So we know it's going to be a victory. And it's a militia, so it defends a two. So it's actually a miss. Yeah. If only they could have been reversed. So let's just go back here. We have success in all four areas of combat. However, this will not be taken this turn. But will the Russians be sneaky and take it from me? Hopefully not. You know, Hilltop's a nice guy. We'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, I can't do much about that this turn. So that's fine. So I'm just going to pause the video, just change everything up, and then we'll come back hopefully for the final conclusion, guys. Okay, guys. We are back and we've uh, reset the, the income tracker. Germany is now at $49. Um, I've cleaned up a little bit more. So now there's four Marines and four medium armor in the Netherlands. The ships now in this sea zone will become British. Um, they did not have the ability to, uh, to attack them in such might. So that's uh, unfortunate. And also down here in Yugoslavia, since it was a victory, this lovely Yugoslavian torpedo boat now also becomes British as well. So that is what's going to happen on that side. And, uh, and uh, of course, we didn't take Lithuania. It's open just to walk in next turn. But we did take this area here um, in Poland. So that's uh, another good advantage. So yeah, Yugoslavia. Um, Northeast Poland, because I can't pronounce the name, um, and the Netherlands are now all in their German occupied zones. Now, the problem is we lost over 10 infantry, uh, more or less, or 10 infantry class units, more or less, uh, five in Romania and at least five in the, in the Netherlands uh, to see that victory through, plus the, the airborne that we lost in Lithuania. So I wouldn't call it a very good victory at all. In some cases, it was probably more of a catastrophe, but it is what it is, right? And that's, uh, that's the way the war is. The Yugoslavians fought hard and desperate, um, but to none avail, but they did take a, a bit off the Germans as well as the Dutch. Actually, I thought the Dutch were gonna do worse, so maybe I'm fortunate with that role right there. So that's currently where we are with that. Now, I did make one small mistake, I forgot to roll my sub movements here. Uh, just because I was actually rolling the previous sub movements, their defense rolls, um, and we're dealing with pretty forgiving guys here. So what I'm gonna do this turn is I'm gonna take U5, a coastal sub, and this U183 into this zone. U107 will, uh, will uh, attack in this zone, and uh, U292 will attack in this zone right here, because I believe they're still open. Um, so we'll be attacking both these for a max of six and both these um, for a max of five. Now they do have anti-submarine warfare, so I've got to take that into consideration. Uh, so basically I think it null and voids any advantage I have. So let's roll for the coastal submarine first um, in that C zone and C, um, two, one. So I, I think, that could be a dollar, and, and um, I might have to read up on that, but it might be a dollar, it might actually be nothing. And I'm thinking actually it's probably nothing. So we'll, we'll roll for U183, which is also in that same sea zone, off the coast of Newfoundland there, and Niente, nothing there. So now we'll roll for the other two submarines. We're gonna roll for the, first we'll roll for the submarine here in uh, sea zone, 32, and see what we can get. Not successful there. And we'll roll for the final submarine in C zone 33. Uh, now that might be a total of $1. Because like I say, I don't, I don't think we get our advantage now that the British have uh, anti-submarine warfare. So 
maybe, just maybe, it might be a total of one dollar this turn, the British takeoff. Uh, we'll reconfirm that, guys. Uh, not very good. I think uh, the German U-boat fleet has had their first and second happy time, and this third time is uh, no happy time, because I'm sure these poor U-boats might not uh, see the light of day coming the, the next turn, but we'll see. We will see how that develops. But right now, I'm sure you guys are all eager to get into our place units phase um, and see what, uh, what has been decided. Um, incidentally, our free French, they've actually decided to land here to defend their post in Algeria. So that's what they'll do um, and hope, uh, hope for the best. Well, you know what? I think what we'll do is we'll land in Tunisia. I know there's a fighter there, but they have infantry on transports and they can move into Tunisia. They can move into several places, but we will see. We might even get a recruitment role this turn, but we won't know until the end. But, uh, but yeah, as far as place movements phase uh, or uh, placing our units, we're going to place this fighter that we took out of southern France. Um, and we are going to come... Uh, start a new fortification line here in Warsaw and uh, I'm going to call that the Burke defensive line after my my German schnauzer uh, he's kind of a miniature standard schnauzer but uh, we'll call that the Burke fortification line um, down here in Italy there's the Carlito one and then of course uh, here we have named after my son the Lincoln defensive line in France uh, around Paris so we have that. We have two new U-boats coming up, um, and we are going to actually produce them inside the protective borders of the Baltic, uh, the Baltic Sea right here. And that's where we're gonna put them this turn. Hopefully, maybe we'll get a crack at using them soon, again. We, uh, we have bought a German fighter. Actually, what I should do here first, before we get too excited, I gotta finish off my non-combat movements. The, uh, the medium bomber has gone back to Germany here and actually has flown to Western Germany and that's where it lies. Our strategic bomber has flew back to Berlin. We have a transport here that will also fly, uh, it can actually move three spaces here so it'll go back into a, uh, actually Eastern Prussia one. Um, actually you know what I think what we'll do is we'll land the transport here in Warsaw and we'll land our fighter in Warsaw as well since our our range is actually limited I'm sorry about that guys chips are always fickle things just like dice um, and down here we have this fighter that can move four it will go uh, since it was already in Yugoslavia it will go one two well I guess it can move more than that but it'll link up in Paris and the tactical bomber will land in Romania because there's an air base there for it to use. And uh, I think that's all for non comments. We brought our fighters back to Belgium just to defend that territory right now. Um, and now we can go back to our place units phase. So this one militia is going to go and defend Belgium currently. Um, actually, you know, I just realized I haven't done my rail movements yet. I'm going to ne neglect that militia movement. Since I can move up to f four uh, rail movements, we're going to go two infantry into Belgium here just to defend that area with our air force. Um, and I think probably that's going to be it for now. There's not a lot we can move around. Um, but that's the, those are the two I did want to move. And, of course, the one militia I built will go into Warsaw, right here. The other fighter, and I have improved construction now, so or pro, improved factories. So I can place two units into Paris on top of the militia. So one fighter will go into Paris. And we will take one more infantry into Paris. Uh, sorry, actually, no, no, we're actually not going to do the infantry into Paris. I apologize. I'm just remembering what I want to do here. We're going to put one artillery into Paris right there. We're also going to complete the fortification line in Paris. So we'll take that construction marker off. 
and uh, put that there. And that's good. Um, and since we have an improved factory here, we're going to put another infantry over here in Warsaw. We're going to put an infantry or uh, an artillery in Romania. We're going to put one more infantry in Western Germany. Uh, and we're going to put the two self propelled units um, in Berlin for now, just to keep Berlin safe. Um, and we also have one medium bomber which we're also gonna to add to the fold. And it will also be put into Western Germany. So I think that's it. There's a lot going on this turn, probably more than I thought there was. Um, and we, uh, we did some resolution, didn't do very well in the Atlantic, um, unfortunately. But, you know, we did what we could do. Um, and, but we did take some key countries over to solidify Europe. Um, and we have hopefully protected some territories in Vichy France um, as well as their colonies. So that all basically boils down to this one recruitment roll, which I'll try to find a blank spot over here. And we want two or less. Seven. Wasn't expecting that, but I figured why not? We'll try. So anyways, Panzer King here in the lion's den, bringing to you a brief summary of Germany 9.1. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything. There's not a lot, a whole lot Germany can do right now, aside from just hopefully keep the, uh, the Axis powers at bay and, uh, and hopefully, uh, defend the continent, uh, as best we can. So anyways, Panzer King here in the Lion's Den signing out. Um, no wait. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I looked south and I forgot. There was one more sub... Um, and that's the sub off South Africa that we were supposed to roll for too. I do apologize. Like I say, it's pretty forgiving, but um, there's a lot going on on the board. So we'll see if this even makes a difference. So it does. So with anti-submarine warfare here, um, this might be, um, might be three hits. So maybe we have four, a total of four, because remember black is always representing Germany. Um, so hopefully this one down here has a maximum of three, so it can take off three. So we might have four IPP taken off. Um, and this U571 has been uh, secret down here, and there's not many threats in the general area. So apologize for that one too. I just remembered I was going to roll all the submarines this turn, um, but I was more preoccupied with the events in Europe. So finally, Panzer King here in the lion's den, going to be signing out, and we'll just show you a different view of Europe. Uh, we have the, uh, the swastikas flying from the Netherlands to Belgium to Paris all the way down into the Black Sea of Romania and into the Adriatic with Yugoslavia. So the German Empire is expanding um, slowly but surely, but how long will it last? Well, we will see what Hilltop has planned for us in his 9.2 turn next sequence. Guys, take care. Stay classy and keep an eye on those sneaky Russians. See you soon.